Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show some stuff related to the executable MBSE profile and this profile is currently at 40x so obviously it's a continuously evolving profile which I've been working on since 2015 to be honest so it's, it's got quite a lot of things uh, and I just want to cover some of the latest changes which are around simplification context diagrams and one of the things with the executable MBSC profile is it supports multiple methods. So it's like a jigsaw system in the sense that it has package types which can be jigsawed together into different patterns. And one of those patterns that's been quite successful, for example, is the creation of activity diagrams with very simplified textual syntax uh, linked to requirements in DAWs Next Generation. Uh, but there are other patterns which can glue into that, either the creation of sequences as executable state charts from those activity diagrams or as as I've more latterly found with say classical system engineering teams uh, the use of functional decomposition and to do that I've used classes as the basis and I've also added new diagram types which are fundamentally SysML but have new term properties set up to make it just more customized to uh, the methodology so uh, let's have a quick look then. So executable, sorry, executable profile is my project type, and I'm going to create an instant pump system model very simply, using not the SysML profile but the executable MBSE profile, and then I'll explain what it is. So the the profile itself is um, a profile I developed. Uh, it's on GitHub. It's part of the SysML helper toolkit, which is all open source. So it doesn't actually cost you anything and one of the advantages is that it will work for multiple versions of Rhapsody uh, without customization and also it's something which has the open ability for you or myself hopefully to customize if, if you need changes. So it's an evolving thing and this is the latest which is 40x and, and don't be too um, don't think that X is actually a small thing uh, since I rewrote it. So let's firstly start, and I've got this helper. These, so these menus down here are all coming from the profile. I've got this helper to basically set up the project properties. And what that does is set properties at the model level, particularly for configuration management purposes. And it sets this add new menu to have executable MBSE contents. Now my menu at the moment is basically SysML menu for everything as per the SysML profile as though there was no customization and then the customized bits are, are available on the right click through the executable MBSC top level. So you uh, so basically it's SysML but I've got different types of block diagrams, different types of internal block diagrams and I've, I may have customized some of the menus on these diagrams and they're all new term types. Uh, so let's firstly create, I'll, I'll do this manually, so um, for example the use case package structure, this essentially gives me the idea that I, in my jigsaw one of the pieces of that jigsaw is going to be somebody developing some use cases and there's a enhanced use case diagram, I notice that uh, I've switched to using the SysML abbreviation, so it's all the diagram types will start with the SysML abbreviation. Uh, this is the use cases for the insulin pump system. And it's just a normal use case diagram, although I've got this refinement in it. So, for example, one of the use cases is to maintain blood glucose for diabetic patient with this profile if I have a, something like a requirement package and that could either be at root model level or it could be nested under a use case but if I have a dependency relationship so just a standard dependency to a requirement package then uh, the helper profile, if I drop a requirement on here, is going to move that requirement into the requirement package. So this is, this is one of the things about having this jigsaw. I have requirement packages, I have use case packages. 
and uh, it makes sense for all the requirements to be in the same package because it, they can then be synchronized into DAWs Next Generation more easily and also you can remove duplication or create tables and matrices. So the goal here is uh, the insulin management system shall assist patient to maintain their glucose levels. Obviously that's very similar to the use case, but it's essentially a goal of the system. And I'm using refinement tool to establish a relationship. And obviously there's other things a, an insulin management system might do, like inform clinical decisions for say a clinician. Now, if I have requirements, you can see here that I've got some table views. So for example, uh, which requirements trace to which use cases? Well, this requirement traces to that use case. Uh, let's add a new, let's add a new requirement here. So the, the insulin management system shall inform the clinician of information able to assist in the diabetes management advice to a patient. So, you know, a use case diagram is a functional contact diagram. It's not telling me anything about what's inside the system, but it's fundamentally telling me that what the system does for who. And um, I've used or dovetail requirements with that. So uh, there's, a, there's obviously value into being able to show the traceability between requirements and use cases uh, or vice versa. So having simple tables already set up that give you a view of the textual requirements and how they relate to use cases is quite useful. And uh, the helper here is automatically scoping these tables to the package which has the requirements in it. So uh, there's automation here sitting under the hood to make it just a bit quicker, simpler, and require a lot less knowledge to be able to develop. So, so uh, you know, one of the classic things is to have an activity diagram underneath the use case. And I, this is set up with a template. I've got a lot of videos and a lot of evidence of this process working really well. If I look at some of the newest stuff then that supports this, so what I found in that early concept phase, before you actually get into kind of engaging with say use case steps, is that it hel it's helpful to have a context diagram. So I've got that's one of the, the pieces in this jigsaw can be a context package. And I might have multiple context packages or multiple use cases packages, but that's the type if you like. And, and context packages are focused on building context diagrams. So this is a context diagram and it's actually equivalent to an internal block diagram, but using global parts. So I've got new terms introduced by the profile here that represent global parts, which are then possible to use on their own. So, you know, I, I could sort of say, well, you know, there's a, a patient and I've got a system, which is an insulin pump system. And I could flow from the patient to the insulin pump system by blood sample maybe the, the system flows back slides blood glucose readings uh, and that you know I, I'm kind of uh, sort of similar to an association but but this sort of context diagram this petal thing where you've got things around the system and this kind of flows to and from it is actually quite a common Visio diagram. 
Uh, and the idea of the automation here is to, is to make Rhapsody as close to that as possible. So just, re just removing choices here with a very simple palette and then providing this automation to enable you to pick from a library of uh, events in this instance, because events are really useful in Rhapsody to be linked with other things like interface blocks. And there's a lot you can do with that. So that's a context diagram package. And the key thing here is these actor usages can be ho uh, hooked to the same actors that I was using for the use case packages. So, uh, and if I if I just change the display options here to go type only because I've I've now typed it, and then I'll just make that the default for the project. And now I've got these actors. So if I change that to a doctor, for example, then that's updated here, but it's also the same element on the use case diagram. So that's what a model is really, isn't it? Uh, let's have a look. So if I then look at what views are useful for that, I've got just a context diagram table view. So this is the relationships between the elements with the what's on the item flow. So these table views, again, you know, the pre-set up by the profile. So it gives you kind of a flavor of some of these more simpler automation. So basically trying to make SysML simpler by removing choices, on, and, but also sort of specializing with these new terms, making Rhapsody easier by setting up display options, and just having some tables and matrices that then support the information that you might put onto that diagram. So uh, there's quite a lot of other stuff here let me just finish this part you know obviously the idea of actor packages is you know I'm going to have uh, multiple use case packages that are all sharing the same actors in fact I might have context diagram packages that are sharing the same actors so I'll put them all into an actor package so if I open up the model I've, I don't have just normal packages here I have my types uh, the number here is just enabling this to be all in an obvious sequence so I, so I know where the requirements are there in the requirements packages. And this has menus to support things like exporting this to, to a format that can be imported into Doors NG and then having the, the automation switch the owner from Rhapsody to DNG. I'll stop there because um, there's quite a lot of other things like functional. I've got, uh, let me just show that quickly. Yeah, I've got this system architecture package. And that's fundamentally got pop definition diagrams in it with system blocks and subsystem blocks and, and this feature function modeling thing. But that's a separate topic because there's quite a lot of uh, additional stuff there as well. So thank you very much.